All right, guys, it's a rainy Saturday afternoon, so I thought I'd be a little bit uh, productive inside the house. We've got the ball game on TV keeping us company while we do a little bit of parts sorting. So I mentioned in yesterday's video that I needed to get the body mounting kit ready for um, putting on the 59 Triumph TR3 so we could start to do some panel alignment. So I've got the body mounting kit laid out here. We've got the uh, Bentley manual here on my iPad. Um, we do actually have a Roadster factory kit here as well for comparison, but I believe the Moss kit seems to be a little bit better. So we're gonna go with the Moss kit. Um, there's the Moss part number if you're looking for it. So anyway, I've got it laid out here according to the uh, Bentley manual where what pads need to be from the front of the car all the way to the back. And then there's some uh, rolled strips here that need to be applied to the frame as well. So all I've done is basically follow the notations on the Bentley and laid all the uh, packing pieces out, bolts, nuts, washers, lock washers, etc. It's very self-explanatory in the Bentley. So if you don't have the Bentley, you better get yourself one. Um, so anyway, we've got it all laid out. Now what I'm gonna do is get the Ziploc bags out and the Sharpie and we're just gonna label these by location. So when we go to use these, we we'll know exactly what location each of these series of uh, packing pieces and nuts and bolts, washers, etc., where they go. So just a little bit of organization on a rainy Saturday afternoon. All right, we got all the uh, hardware tagged and bagged. So we're good to go. We'll uh, bring these out to the garage probably on Monday. I think uh, tomorrow, Sunday, I'm gonna enjoy driving the TR6. There's a car event happening tomorrow. So maybe I'll take you along the way for that event. And then we'll maybe get out in the garage on Monday and we'll start adding these packing pieces and tightening the body down tight to the frame so we can uh, then work on our body gaps. All right, guys, welcome back to the garage. It's the 25th of May and uh, some of you might be able to tell that I've reorganized the uh, garage to put the TR6 on the left side of the garage and move the 59 TR3 over to the right side. It's going to work out a little bit better as far as having a car home and being able to move it in and out of the garage. So I uh, did a little bit of reorganization and cleaning over the last couple of days. Uh, we did work on that body mounting kit, which we'll add to the car in the near future. But today I thought I'd start working on actual uh, doors and getting ready to do some body work on them. The first thing I wanted to do was get some rust remover. So I've got this rust remover gel and we were just going to do a little bit of a coating here along this bottom flange piece on the door skin just to get rid of any uh, little rust pits that might be here on the bottom of the doors. So that's the first thing we're going to do and maybe we'll do a little coat up here. You can see some just some surface rust up in here. So maybe we'll do a little coat of that uh, gel rust remover, get that working, and then we'll uh, start having a look at these doors uh, as far as bodywork is concerned. They're not too, too bad. Uh, what I will do is I believe the rust converter needs to be washed off. So at that point, uh, we'll give the doors a good wash down as well. As you can see, they're pretty dusty on the inside. So we'll get some soap and water out, give these a good wash down before we start any bodywork. Uh, to get ready of any contaminants before we actually start laying filler on these doors so that's what we're up to today so i thought i'd just take you along quickly i know this is a boring step of the restoration process nobody really wants to watch body work but it's got to be done so i'll just take you along the way here and there i'm not going to bore you to tears for you guys watching me sand these things but uh just want to let you know i was working on the project all right as mentioned this is the boring part for those of you though who want to follow along uh, I'll take you through uh, kind of a step-by-step -step of what how I do body work. So we've got our first uh, coat of filler on just on the areas that we suspect are uh, needing it. Uh, so I've done some areas here along this side and along the bottom, but I haven't had any filler up to the top parts here. On this door, it looks like the door is in pretty good shape. So I've only put a little bit of filler down here on this corner where it looks like this might be a little low. So what I've done is allowed the uh, filler to dry and then we've just gone with a, a little bit of a guide coat on top and now we're going to break our block out with 80 grit and we're going to block sand this now uh, the guide code is going to help us to know if there are any high or low spots on these doors once we uh, do a little bit of sanding on them so that's what we're going to do now and that's why we've applied the guide coat to see if we need to add some filler in other areas that we've missed or whether we need to actually maybe potentially if we've got high spots we need to may need to uh, take a little uh, hammer and hammer those high spots down 
a little bit. So I'm not suspecting that we have any high spots, but we definitely have some low spots. So we're going to find out. The block will re will reveal all, as they say. So uh, we'll break the block out shortly after this guide coat just dries a little bit. I'm just using some black um, spray paint for my guide coat. You can buy a dry graphite coat that's uh, like a powder uh, sponge on, or you can buy a spray uh, coat, which I actually have some of. I'll show you probably at a later date. But uh, right now we're just using uh, black sp spray paint as our guide coat. All right, here's the first pass on the uh, door. This is the driver's side door. And uh, you can still see clearly from the guide coat that I have a low spot here still. And we have a low spot back here. The rest of it's feathering out pretty well. Still have some work to do over there. I haven't finished sanded that area. Looks like we might have a little bit of a low spot there as well. But the rest of it's looking pretty good. So what I'll do now is I'll go back and I'll just scratch up these uh, black areas a, a little bit and get that paint off there. I don't like leaving the guide coat on before I apply another coat of filler. Just, uh, just my philosophy. But anyway, we'll rough this area up again. We'll do another quick coat of filler in these particular areas where it's still showing black. And then we'll continue to uh, block, signed, block sound it down to see if we can get rid of those low areas. All right, we've got the, uh, the worst of the two doors finished, I think. I think it looks pretty good. So we've got it all feathered edged out here. So uh, we've got it all sanded down of the guide coat. So that's looking good. It's always a little bit depressed around uh, the door handle lock or door handle grab handle, you know, push and pull over the years. It does weaken this metal a little bit around here. You can sort of pull it out, but it's just going to end up pushing back in. So normally I don't do too much with those unless it's really depressed in. So we'll just leave it like that. So. Anyway, I'm happy with the way that sanded out, and we've got our coat of filler here on the second door, and I think it needs a little bit less work than the first door. So we'll uh, go ahead and we'll probably give this an initial quick sand. It's getting a little bit late out here, and it's actually really chilly today, but uh, we'll stay out here for probably another half an hour or so, give this a quick uh, sand, and maybe we'll get out here and we'll finish this up tomorrow. Maybe, possibly, uh, I have to work this weekend, but it's possible I might be able to get this into epoxy primer on Saturday. We'll see. All right, for all you people who've been asking for the curmudgeon, bless, here he is. <laughs> You've been baking a cake, Mr. Tushing. Yes, I that. have. Or is that uh, body filler? Body filler. Say hi to your loyal YouTube fans. Hello, everybody. I'm still alive, um, and I'm uh, hoping to see you all soon and um, catch up on what you all been doing. Make sure everybody's still healthy and alive and uh, wish you all the best. I can't wait to have a pint with you all and a laugh with David. Boy. Even though he doesn't drink pints, but we can give him a chocolate milk. Very, very cordial. So he's gotten a little bit nicer in his old age. I'm refined. A little soft. I've always been refined. He's a little bit more politically correct these My days. My friendy Davey brings the worst of me out some days. Anyway, um, trying to talk. Like trying like to a brother. Shush. Trying to talk less into going to the uh, six-pack trials this year, so we'll see. Actually, it'd be great if I could uh, train less to sand but, stuff. But guys, I have to get my Canadian citizenship. I need I'm waiting for that, and I'm waiting for my permanent residency card that's expired. And it's uh oh, we're too busy letting people in this country that oh, don't belong. <laughs> so, okay, well we're gonna cut <laughs> that piece out. People that belong, they want to push out the door. <laughs> All right, so much for the political correctness. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm going to teach him how to sand so I don't have to sand so much. All right. We ended up sticking it out a little bit longer in order to get this uh, door done. So it's done as much as I'm going to go to. Again, I've got an opportunity to do a little bit more uh, correction um, at the next stage. Well, not the next stage. So the next stage is epoxy primer. And then we'll go to a polyester primer. Uh, and then that will be blocked out. And once that's blocked out, we'll go to a high build primer. So I've actually got a couple of more stages where I can get this laser straight. As I mentioned, it's gonna be a black car. So you wanna make sure the panels are straight. So this is just really the beginning, uh, doing the major areas of body work and the refinement can happen afterwards when we start laying down some um, polyester primer and then some high build urethane primer and get those two uh, stages blocked out. So lots of sanding in my future. All right, Saturday, May the 27th, 2023, just coming up to uh, 7.30 a.m. And we're trying to make the most of my uh, only day off this weekend. 
and we're going to try to get these doors into epoxy primer today so so moving some vehicles around we're going to get some vehicles covered up best we can get the garage cleaned out and organized a bit better before we break out the epoxy primer so uh we're just in the process of doing that we'll drag out the compressor and make sure that's drained of any water that's uh might be sitting in there from over the winter um and like I said, we'll cover things up so they don't get some overspray on them. Um, and that's pretty much about it. We'll give this garage a quick uh, sweep out and blow out with a leaf blower. And then we'll be uh, ready to epoxy prime those doors after we uh, give them a good cleaning. I think we're going to uh, spray them in two steps. I think we'll spray the bottom side first and then flip them over and do the top side. Uh, normally I try to hang them, but uh, that's a little bit problematic to get into some of the uh, areas that are critical on these doors like the bottoms um, it's a little bit better to or easier to get a, a spray down in that area for example in the bottom of the doors and in the top of the doors if they are uh, sort of sitting flat I can get uh, a little bit better angle at them versus hanging them so like I said we're going to do a two shot or a two stage approach to these doors and uh, I'm not too concerned about the interior interior paint obviously that will never be seen um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy it, let it dry for probably three hours. And then we're probably just going to put a uh, block or something uh, inside here and flip these over. And the thing I'm concerned about is wherever I put a block in there to keep it suspended off the table, it's going to probably leave an impression in the primer if it hasn't dried for like 24 hours. But I'm not so concerned about like, like that. Like I said, it will never be seen. So we want to elevate these doors just a little bit just to get a little bit better, better paint coverage. We want, don't want to leave them flat on the table. So I've sort of been thinking about that. If I do happen to damage or scuff the paint on the inside because it's not completely dry, well, that's probably going to be okay. Anyway, that's the approach that we're going to take today. So like I said, we'll just uh, get ready and prepped for that. We have to wait for the temperature to rise out here anyway. We want to shoot when it's about uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, right now we're only at 60. So we're going to have to wait for some heat to uh, develop during the day before we actually break out the epoxy anyway. But we'll get prepped for that uh, point in time. A couple more Amazon purchases. In the meantime, we did buy some uh, red Scotch-Brite pads uh, to scuff up those areas that are a little bit difficult on the door. And we did get some more uh, clean sheets uh, for the uh, Bondo or the Bondo board as we're running a little bit low on that as well. So... All right, let's get organized and then uh, we'll bring you back once we're getting ready to uh, shoot the epoxy primer on these doors. All right, making progress on getting ready to prime. And uh, it's amazing how much uh, there is actually involved in just laying a coat of primer, epoxy primer on panels. So we've got the uh, 59 TR3 covered up. We've got some of our equipment covered up, our welder, in our new uh, rolling toolbox that we don't want to get any overspray. This one's kind of a lost cause. It's gone through a few restorations and it's uh, pretty well coated now with primer. So we're going to try to resist the urge just to let this one be uncovered. Um, we've got our materials out uh, on the bench over here. We have uh, drained the compressor of any water and drained our little water separator. We're not going to go through our desiccant dryer just for primer but we do have a little bit of a water extractor on here and we'll put one on the gun as well figured i'd take you through the products that i'm using and we'll start with this overspray protective sheeting so this is really kind of basic for anybody that's just wanting to start out painting so these are some of the materials that you might want to get so this overspray protective sheeting is what i have here on the car and this one is made by norton so it works really well actually to cover up uh anything you don't want to get any overspray on and i generally have something in the garage that i don't want to have overspray on so we cover up with this uh, thin protective sheeting so it expands out pretty much double the size of the box so there are little wings that fold out from the plastic that you can expand it to cover larger areas so i think we've got this wing expanded out and this wing is not expanded out so it could actually go for a much larger car as well so and i believe there are larger sizes and smaller sizes of this but just works perfect actually for a little triumph so We've got that ready to go, and then we've got all of our stuff here ready on the table. As mentioned, I bought some um, red Scotch-Brite pads, and we'll be using these to scuff the doors prior to uh, painting. Any of the hard ports that you can't get a proper piece of sandpaper or anything like that, or the door tops, for example, which are wood, we're going to probably scuff down with the uh, red Scotch-Brite. We've got some, uh, some gloves here. Uh, it's always good to wear gloves, just not to get any fingerprints on your panels prior to painting. You don't want any oils from your skin to contaminate the surface. 
Um, talking about decontaminating the surface, we have some panel prep here. So we'll spray the panels with the panel prep before we get ready to paint. There's a number of different things you can use. Some guys will use uh, Windex actually to do their panel cleaning. I've been known to actually use rubbing alcohol as well. So that's another option. So either panel prep or Windex or uh, rubbing alcohol, again, it's your choice or all combination of all three if you want. Some guys use just straight soap and water. Some use lacquer thinner. There's a million ways to do this. But anyway, that's pretty much what I use to prep the panel. Obviously some good uh, lint-free uh, paper towels some lacquer thinner to uh, clean the gun uh, out and i also have this spray gun paint remover which works really well as an aerosol just to clean your paint gun out a little bit um, these are good these double bis uh, cleaning gun bottles so to fill up your lacquer thinner in these bottles it's got a fine tip uh, spray on it helps you clean your guns out a little bit better we are using the decup system so if you've not seen this by double bis we're using the D-Cups, which is a disposable cup system. It's not exactly cheap, but it's definitely much easier as far to clean up your equipment in the end. So you basically uh, pay to play. Um, so you can either go with this, a non-disposable regular cup um, that you obviously need to clean, or you can just use some smaller cups. We have the nine fluid ounce cups here for this project, just the smaller cups. We have the larger cups when we're doing a larger project. So those will be perfect for this. Uh, as far as actual product that we're using, we're going to be using this Proform uh, 2K Epoxy Primer. So then we have the activator back here. It's a mixed one-to-one uh, -one for a primer. You can actually use this as a sealer as well with some reducer, but today we're going to be using it as an actual primer. So mixed one-to-one. -one. Then we get into some other equipment that you need to have, obviously mixing cups to mix that one-to-one. -one. We've got our uh, gun wrenches over here and some cleaning brushes, etc. We've got, uh, I think these guys call this uh, whirlwind filter, which will attach to the bottom of the gun to extract a little bit of more moisture out of the lines, if possible. Got our mixing sticks. Today we're gonna be using our uh, Eastwood Concour gun. Now, uh, the T-sheet or the technical sheet on this Proform epoxy primer says I can use be between a 1.4 and 1.6 tip. This is a 1.4 on this gun, so it's the minimum that you can use. I do have another gun standing by that's a 1.8 that I tend to have a little bit better success with, but we're going to go with the uh, concourse and give that a shot uh, since it's already equipped with the D-Cups uh, cup system. The 1.8 gun that I have doesn't have the D-Cups on it. I have to use a regular cup, so we'll attempt it with this first, and then we may switch it out if we can't get uh, the pattern that we're looking for. So uh, that's pretty much all that we've got ready to go as far as the paint job concer is concerned. So as you can see, it's a little more involved than just, you know, grabbing a rattle can and going to town. So let's uh, put this to use. Again, we've got to wait for it to warm up a little bit out here. And then once it warms up, we'll get that panel, uh, well, I'll probably scuff the panel down now, but we'll clean it up just prior to us getting ready to primer it. And then, like I said, I'll do uh, bottom side first and then flip it, let it dry, obviously. Flip it and we'll do top side. And lastly, but most importantly, we've got a uh, respirator standing by. So this is a, a paint respirator. Actually got a backup over here as well. So this one's fairly new and the filters are pretty clean. So we're good to go and keep ourselves safe from this uh, epoxy. One more thing I forgot to mention as I continue to go through our paint cabinet. So you're going to want some uh, strainers for the paint. Make sure you don't get any debris in your paint. So always filter your uh, primer or paints. That's a good idea. And your clear coats. Uh, and some people actually like to use tack cloths um, to clean the surface before painting or between coats. So I've got some tack cloths standing by as well. So just a couple more things to add to the growing list. All right, guys, just coming up to about 930-ish and we're getting pretty close to 70. So I think I can shoot anything over 65, so we're going to go ahead. So we've got our epoxy mixed up one-to-one, -one, and uh, we've got our paint gun standing by. We've got a uh, test paper standing by because I haven't painted it in a while. I want to make sure my pattern's correct, so we'll do a couple spray outs to make sure we're good to go. And as mentioned, I don't normally sp spray this with a 1.4 tip, so we want to get this right. So uh, panels are all clean, ready to go on the table over there. The white being being wiped down twice, blow it off with the air gun. We'll blow it off one more time, tack rag them, and get ready to shoot. So here we go. I won't be able to film this because I don't want to get uh, epoxy primer all over my cell phone. All right, just coming up to uh, 1 p.m. And the doors have been sitting outside basking in the sun for the last few hours. 
So they're just about ready to be flipped over and moved back in the garage to get the uh, epoxy on the top sides. But that's what they look like. So looking good. All right, we'll move them inside and get them set up for the top side coat. All right, guys, it's been a couple of hours since uh, we sprayed the black epoxy on top of the doors. And the good thing about spraying black epoxy primer is it kind of shows you where you've missed as far as bodywork is concerned or how you did as far as your bodywork was concerned. So I can see over here, for example, there's a little bit of uh, sanding that I missed. And I can also see here, and you may not be able to see this in the camera, but there's actually a few dents along here, along this top edge of this piece here that I've actually missed. So we'll have to go back and do some bodywork in those areas. Now, as mentioned previously, the good thing about epoxy primer is that you can actually do your bodywork over the top of the epoxy primer. You actually have to let it sit for 24 hours before you attempt to do any bodywork on top of it. Uh, read your technical sheet that comes with your uh, epoxy primer that you're using because all epoxies are different. So um, you may actually have to let it dry a little bit longer before you apply bodywork, or in some cases you might be letting it dry less. But anyway, read your technical sheet as far as the product is concerned. So, yep, they're looking good. At least they're uh, protected from uh, any surface rusting. So uh, we can now move on to the next step with these, which again, we'll be doing a little bit more refinement and body work. We're also going to, as mentioned, go to the next step at some point, which will be polyester primer. Um, so there is an open window on this primer, on this epoxy primer of 48 hours. So if I wanted to, at this point, I could actually spray it uh, with the polyester primer without having to scuff the uh, epoxy primer. But since we're gonna be going outside of that 48 hour window, we'll have to scuff sand it again before we go to the next step of applying that uh, polyester primer. Now, again, depending on what epoxies you have or what epoxy you're using, those open windows are going to be different. I've had epoxy primers before that have an open window of like seven days. So this is relatively short at uh, 48 hours. So whatever we do uh, next, we're going to have to scuff sand this epoxy before we actually go to the next uh, series of, uh, of primers. Anyway, that's it for now. I think what we'll do is we'll just do a little uh, cleanup project. I think I'm going to grab the brass hinges from the doors and maybe give them a quick cleanup on a wire brush and uh, see what they look like. All right, just a quick look at the uh, hinges before we go to town with a uh, wire wheel, probably just on an electric drill, and probably maybe a few other little tools along the way to help us get uh, rid of this uh, all this old paint and to get these uh, polished up a little bit. So let's see what these look after, look like after about uh, probably about an hour's work or so. Probably takes to go through these and see what they come up like. All right, that was a little uh, fun afternoon project, and as you can see. They turned out uh, quite well. I really like them uh, just to polished brass uh, as opposed to the uh, painted, which is supposed to be on the car. So we're going to go back with just the brass versions. I'm not sure how much they'll tarnish, but uh, I think they'll look better than painted, although not correct. I'm going to go back with the brass. So what I did basically was I used uh, to get the paint off and all the old, uh, some of the little uh, crusty bits. I used the, uh, the paint stripping uh, disc. So just this soft uh, silicone carbide disc to get the worst of the stuff off. Then I hit it with a uh, wire brush, particularly in these areas here. And I also use these little bobbins, which are like little uh, Scotch-Brite pads uh, for the Dremel. So I just had them fitted to the Dremel to get into some of the tight areas as well. And then finally, what I did is I just gave them a quick polish. This is just a cloth, uh, a cloth buffer for my four and a half inch angle grinder. And all I did was I just used a little bit of, I didn't have any chrome polish handy. I thought I had some for brass, but uh, I just used a little bit of uh, compound on there just to uh, polish them up a little bit uh, more. There are some scratches in them. I'm not even sure if these are from the factory or from me, but regardless, they look 100% better than the, what they did when I first started. So yeah, ready to go back in the car. All right, guys, just after uh, 8 p.m. and we're out to shut the garage down for the evening and uh, put the TR6 back in its spot. So we'll put these doors aside temporarily. I think the next thing we're going to do on the project is start to work on the rear fenders. So uh, we'll start body working the rear fenders in order to get those into epoxy primer. And then we'll move forward to the front fenders 
and they actually need some work, uh, metal work, before we get too much further into it. And of course, we have some major fitment issues with the uh, the bonnet and the front apron that needs to be addressed. So that's sort of the plan of action is to kind of move from the rear of the car up to the front of the car and get uh, those panels fitting a little bit better and looking a little bit better. And like I said, we'll get uh, panels body worked and into epoxy primer as soon as we can. So that's kind of the next step on this project. We also mentioned that we want to uh, get the uh, pads and uh, hardware to secure the body tub to the frame so we can start working on panel gaps and that kind of stuff. So that will be in the uh, future works as well. All right, that's it for tonight, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and thanks for subscribing. We'll see you on the next video.